الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علیہ علی و صحبی و سلم اما بر حبت فلاح کنٹینیو آن ان آر اسٹڈی آف تفسیر امام سعدی اور ریڈنگ فرام تفسیر امام سعدی رحمہ اللہ تعالی ہز تفسیر آف سورۃ الفاتحہ وی لیفٹ آف ور اللہ سبحانہ تعالی سے کتاب الکریم ایا کے نعبد و ایا کے نستعین It is you alone who we worship and it is you alone who we depend upon. You alone we worship and you alone we seek help. That is, Imam Sa'adi says, we single out you alone to worship and ask for help. Putting the object at the beginning of the sentence conveys the meaning of of exclusivity so this is really an Arabic language benefit uh, of put uh, what they refer to as the mir the mir munfasal this is a, uh, a an, an object pronoun and putting that at the beginning of, of the sentence by saying iyaka Na'budu. It means it is exclusive, it is restricted, uh, you know, you're imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's restricted to him. Iyaka, when, you know, this, this gives it great emphasis in, uh, in the Arabic language. Instead of saying, for example, uh, using another uh, na'budak or something like this, saying that we worship you. Okay, this, this has a different implication in the Arabic language by using iyaka, this gives it emphasis. This emphasizes, you know, sometimes, uh, and I think sometimes when you're speaking Arabic uh, and you say to someone something, ana wa iyahu, it, it gives a, a kind of emphasis. And a lot of times you don't hear uh, the general Arabs using it like that because of the distance from the fusha, from the classical use of the language. So they just they have their own way of speaking because of the the changing uh, times, changing circumstances, and the general generality in the language, and the generality of the use of the people, the general use of the people, the amia. So they have a different use. They you know, but it's it has a, a great meaning when you study. Uh, the Naho study, the, the grammar and the grammatical rules. And anyhow, as Imam Sa'adi mentioned, it gives exclusivity. You know, Iyaka Na'budu. It, it, it emphasizes, it, it, it specifies that it's only you we worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, You alone we worship and ask for help. Putting the object at the beginning of the sentence conveys the meaning of exclusivity, meaning it's only for Allah. It's only Allah we're, we're, at, we're worshiping. And it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're pleading for help. And this is talking about help. It's, it's okay to ask someone, you know, you need some help. So-and-so, please help me. I need you to please, can you loan me some money? Please, can you help me? This big object is laying on my body. Can you please help me? Because here you are making isti'ana, seeking the help of someone who is able to support you, who is able to help you. So perhaps there's a big weight. Maybe someone's lifting weights and weights have fallen on their chest, okay? And they can't get from under it. Please help me. You know, you're, you're seeking support. You're seeking help and assistance. You need to get this weight off you. Of course, this is permissible. But the iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een here you alone we seek help this is ubudiyah this is the this is the help and the support that only comes through worship and it's an act of worship isti'ana you know to seek this help from Allah wa istighatha to seek help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are having a trial or a tribulation So this is uh, this is ibadah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Uh, and then he says, in other words, we worship you and we do not worship anyone other than you. We ask you for help and we do not ask anyone other 
than you for help. Worship is mentioning before seeking help by way of mentioning what is general before what is specific, and also to give precedence to Allah's dues over those of his slaves. Worship, ibadah, refers to everything that Allah loves and is pleased with of actions and words, both outward and inward. Seeking help refers to relying upon Allah, Azza wa Jal, when seeking to attain what is beneficial and ward off what is harmful, whilst trusting that one will attain that. Again, he says seeking help, so this isti'ana from Allah, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِين is isti'ana. It's seeking help. He said that seeking help refers to relying upon Allah when seeking to attain what is beneficial. Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you the natija, can give you that which is beneficial. The, 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 to, to get that end result, it comes from Allah and ward off what is harmful. That only comes from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, whilst trusting that one will attain that. So, for example, if you make isti'ana with the creation, and you believe that the creation actually yanfa'ak, yanfa'uka, o yudurraka, you know, that they will. Can, can benefit you or harm you especially when it comes to the results then this can enter into ibadah that's why you have to be careful you rely on support from the one who supports you in your family for example for a woman who's married she relies and seeks the help of her husband perhaps you know she depends upon his support he pays the bills okay and maybe she wants to buy something so she asks for his help that's something he's able to do and again the ultimate result if she asks him he may refuse he may give it to her he may even attempt to give it to her and it it becomes something which is not helpful so that natija that 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 end result it, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ultimate help the ultimate Protection from harm is from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Worshipping Allah, seeking His help, is the means of attaining eternal happiness and salvation from all evils. There is no other way of attaining salvation apart from doing these two things. True worship can only be that which is learned from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and done with the intention of seeking the pleasure of Allah. If it includes these two things, then it is worship. Seeking help is mentioned after worship, even though it is a part of worship. So this is uh, what he was talking about. He was mentioned in a, a qaida, uh, a principle, uh, which is that mentioning the uh, the specific uh Yurid biha al am. Okay, so he it's a, a mentioning a specific thing, which is actually, in fact, it's also a part of the general uh, principle. So what he said here, when he said, true worship can only be that which is learned from the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and done with the intention of seeking the pleasure of Allah. If it includes these two things, then it is worship. Seeking help is mentioned after worship, even though it is a part of worship. Okay. So seeking help, although it is distinguished, the, fir the, the first thing is that we're, we're saying that we worship Allah alone and we seek His help. Seeking help is a part of worship. Okay? So this is mentioning something, a specific type of worship, which is in fact worship. That's the basic way what's being said here. Seeking help is mentioned after worship even though it is a part of worship because in offering all types of worship, the individual needs the help of Allah. If Allah does not help him, he will not attain what he wants to of fulfilling commands and heeding prohibitions. Okay? So we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and assistance to even to worship him. We need Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's assistance in everything. And this is the difference between the mu'min 
and perhaps even the Muslim. And this is la shak, no doubt, this is the difference between the believer or the Muslim and the disbeliever. Because a Muslim realizes that everything, the only reason we're able to worship Allah, the only reason we have this ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to, to read this book, that we're taking in air, that we still have some health, that we still have some wealth, that we even own this book, that we have these, uh, uh, these edges, Ajiza, you know, we have these devices that we can make these videos. The light, the sunlight, everything, that all of these ni'am are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way that we can do what we do is only from the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the believer is always going back with that praise. Alhamd, alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah. Directing all the praise to Allah. The ni'mah of guidance. I was listening to one of the du'at al-khair from Ahlul Sunnah in one of his videos and he was talking about just the ni'mah of being a Muslim. A ni'mah of having been brought out min dhulamati al-nur from the darkness to the light. That even that we just need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously and we can't thank him enough tabarak wa ta'ala for that. Have a ni'mah min ni'amillah. And so it's very important ahabat fillah that we we Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything because He helps us to have ta'a. He helps us to have worship and to avoid His prohibition and to even be conscious of, 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 of having taqwa. It's from Allah. We want to have taqwa law and it's only because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to even be conscious of that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Until the next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.